Nesiata Dishmaya, we are here in the Al Sheikh Academy on a Wednesday, and it's been a while since we've learned Der Hashem of the Ramchal, Rav Chaim Moshe Lutzato, Zecher Tzadik Kadosh Livracha. It's a giant tzadik, and Mezat uh, Hashem, we've been learning about the ways that Hashem runs the world and, and the purpose of why we're here in this world. And right now we are in the second part of the book. There's four parts of the book. We're in the second part of the book in the third chapter. And it's about Ashkecha Aishi, the, the divine providence over an individual in this world. And we were learning in the last class, which is obviously online, whoever wants to go back and, and check that out. In the last class, we were talking about how everybody has their trials and their tribulations that they go through in this life and the successes and the failures of life. And the idea uh, was mentioned that all of, uh, I'm just going to read this last letter again. Again, we're in the second part of the book, in the third chapter, and we are on letter Gimel. According to this idea that everything that we go through in life, all the ups and all the downs, are just for you just to grow and to come closer to the perfection, we see here that he says, the success of this world that you experience and the hardship of the world that you experience, that part of life and the goal of life, which is to cling to Hashem completely, part of that is that you have to go through some trials. You have to go through some tests. And that's where your successes and your failures also, they play a part, a part in getting you to experience these moments of rectification in life where you experience a success, but you stay humble or you experience a failure and you recognize that you have to keep on going, right? Yeah. The, the divine wisdom, the supernal wisdom, figured that this, this would be good for this person to go through. But there's another reason that, that we have trials and tribulations. There's another reason that we have success and failures. According to the what's called justice, right, and reward, that the, the, the justice and the reward that we go through in life, where Hashem wants to give us the ultimate good of us being able to connect to Him. Hashem made a way that this world creates a reality that your actions as a person, your individual actions as a human being, they will now help a person and they will cause that there should be help from up above for a person to be successful and you'll be saved from different obstacles along the way. Like it says, in Shmuel, in the book of Samuel, in the book of Shmuel, it says the, the legs of, of the pious ones will God guard meaning that the people that are doing the right thing, Hashem protects them so that they shouldn't fall on the stumbling blocks. They shouldn't have too many obstacles. Mm-hmm. For sure, also in this, there's levels upon levels of, of finer details. There's one that, according to the actions of a person that he's already done in his world, that Hashem will give him a little bit of help. You acted such and such, you got a good score on this test that I gave you. You merited now that I will help you the next time there's an obstacle in front of you. I will help you a little bit. Maybe I won't remove the obstacle, but I will give you better shoes to run through it. Or I'll give you whatever it is, right? Like you're going to get some extra, extra help. There's a different person. There's another person that there's a decree upon him, according to his actions, that he deserves a lot more help from up above mm-hmm. in acquiring his perfection as a human, burst, per, as a human being. His, his achievement of, of completion in his inner workings and becoming a better person from up above, according to how he acted, they decree this person is deserving of extra help. Let's make it much easier for him to get to where he needs to be spiritually and internally. And there's a different person, that he's fitting to receive a higher level of help. And so to the opposite. There's someone that according to the, to the deen, according to the judgment of his actions in this world as an individual, from Shamaim they make a degree that this person is not allowed to be helped. 
from heaven, he's not going to get any help in, in, in achieving his goal. But they're not going to make it harder for you. That's already a level, right? That according to your actions, they say in Shemaim, listen, this person, the way he's acting, he doesn't deserve our help right now to get over his obstacles. We don't, we're not going to make the path easier for him to become a better person and for him to get the, his tikkun and for him to be clinging to Hashem. But we're not going to make it harder for him, right? It's, it's, it's as hard as it is, but it's not going to be any easier. And there's another person that according to his mishpat, according to the justice of his actions, they're going to increase the, the preventions that you have in coming to becoming a better person. They're going to prevent you more and more and more from becoming that better person. Mm. They're actually going to place stumbling blocks in front of you. you what? You no, you don't have help. You came, in, you came in the middle, right? But we're saying that one of the reasons that we have success and failures and we have tests in this world, one of them is so that, that you can go through a, a, a success or a failure and bring, by way of that you come closer to Hashem, right? That's one side of it. Everybody is in the world in order to, in the end, in Olam Abba, in the spiritual world called Olam Abba, to cling to Hashem. So through this life, you have to go through ups and downs, successes and failures, in order to help you to get to clinging to Hashem. The Ramchal teaches there's another reason that, that is the idea of Mishpat Vigmul. Mishpat is justice. Right? What did you do? What did you deserve? Right? And the other one is reward. What you did in previous no, now, in your lifetime right now. In this life, we're talking about this world. In this world, there's things that a person does. It could be from Shemaim right now, they had a test, and from Shemaim they say, let's help this person. He needs help to get through this. The next test, we're going to help him. There's another person that according to how he acted, in Shemaim they say, let's make it much easier for him. There's another person from Shemaim, they say, we're not going to help him, but we're not going to make it harder. And then there's another person, person that according to his actions, in Shemaim they say, we're going to make it very hard for this person. We don't want him to come to Olam Abba. Hashem doesn't want you to cling to him. You've, been, you've proved by way of your actions that you're not deserving of, of Olam Abba. So from Shemaim, not only are they not helping him, not only are they not are, are they are they not giving him any boost to get to his goal? They're making it harder for him to even get there. They don't want him to get there. It will take a lot of work and a lot of effort and a lot of strength for that person to get to a point where he actually achieves any level of spiritual success. Because from Shemaim, they're making it very hard for him to do anything. There's another person that's completely wicked. Not only now are they making it harder for you, not only are they not helping you, they're going to seal off all of the ways that you could have gotten a tikkun even if you put in a lot of work. You put in work, you want to be better, but because of how you acted, the rabbi that was going to come to your city to talk, you can't go to the shir. All of a sudden something happens up. The uh, finding out about Rabbi Nachman's tikkun aklali, from Shemaim, they make it that you never hear the words tikkun aklali in your life. You never hear about any kind of tikkun, you never hear about anything that could help you to, to, to uh, purify yourself, even if you want to work hard, even if you want to do everything that you need to do. From Shemaim, they're closing off all of the ways to make a tikkun. They don't want you. That's the completely wicked person. It's the angels by way of a commandment of Hashem. Yeah. The Ramchal says, in all of these different levels, there's many, many different fine details. You could find a person, that a person, he's successful in his actions, and they make a decree in Shemaim, this person deserves help, we're going to help him in this world. Right? We want to help you in your avoda, in your tefillah, in your Torah learning, in your mitzvot, you have extra help from Shemaim. So that he should be, it should be easier for him to get the desired result of being a tzaddik or being a good person in this world, being a person that has a majority of mitzvot and a minority of, of, of averot, so that you can cling to Hashem better and that there shouldn't be anything preventing you from getting there. And it could be that it could be decreed on a person according to his actions, you 
that they make a decree from Shemaim that there's going to be walls and there's going to be a lot of obstacles and hardship that stand in between you and perfection. In between you and your goal as a Jew. Until it's going to take a lot more work from you, a lot more effort, a lot more hard labor for you to be able to break through the mask, break through the wall that is separating you from Hashem. That mechitza, that wall that you put up with your actions, now you're going to need to work super hard to break through it to come back to where you should be. Remember, we talked about this, that there's how we come into the world, right? And it was Adam Arishon came into the world. He just had to do a little bit to come a little bit higher. And now, not only from his sin did he not go higher, he didn't stay where he is, he went down. So now when you're down, you don't just try to get back to where you're meant to be. You have to first get back to where you were and then work to get back, right? That's the principle that the Ramchal taught us. So now this person that he did a lot of sins, he went down, and from Shemaim, they're preventing him from coming up. So now he has to work even harder to even come back to where he was, and even more harder to work to get to where he should be. Right? So he's like really double work. You have to, that person has to work extremely hard and with a lot of effort to get to where he's meant to be. And it's the complete opposite for the Rasha. The, the Rasha, they gave him a lot of success in this world. They opened in front of him all of the openings to complete abyss of, of being lost in this world. They open the gates for you to be lost, to completely lose yourself, so to say, to spiritually commit suicide. Here, the, the Rasha, the wicked person, they show him all the ways possible that he can lose himself spiritually. And they open the door for you. Go, go. Here, there's a party. Tons of women, go, go to it. Here's this, this drug that's gonna get addicted to for the rest of your life, you're gonna be screwed, go, go, go. They're telling you, they open all the doors for you. Go, get lost. Literally, like we say get lost, get lost. Petach avadon, the opening of getting lost, of completely getting lost. Shidachevo, that you should get pushed away there. And there could be that they make a decree upon the rasha that he has hard times. To prevent him from doing the wicked thing that he had in his mind. Person, a Jew wants to go do an evil thing in the world. It could be from Shemaim, they make a decree. No one's going to help him to do that evil thing. He's not going to be able to do it. They don't want you to do that evil thing. So they prevent you in every way. It could be Hashem doesn't want you to do that negative thing that you want to do in the world. And this is exactly what David the Melech would pray for. Hashem, don't let these people that have a lust for evil to, to, to carry out their conspiracies, their plans. Don't let them do these negative things in the world. David Melech would pray to Hashem, Hashem, there's evil people in the world that they want to do evil things. They have a ta'ava, they have a lust to do negative things. What? We say it about ourselves. I think he means, how do you mean? That's the 12th one. What are you saying? That's the one who was added. Right? Stop my, my tongue from speaking evil. There you're praying about yourself, right? There you're praying about yourself. Here, David Amelech is praying that the Rashaim in the world, Hashem, don't let them do what they want to do. At the end of the Amidah, we're talking about ourselves, right? Don't stop my tongue from speaking bad. But it's the same thing, right? In the end of the day, it could be that Hashem looks at the Rasha and he says, Yalla, gates open. Please do everything possible to ruin your life spiritually that you'll never come back. I don't want to see you in Olam Abba. And it could be that Hashem also sees the wicked person trying to do things and He wants them, he wants them to, to, to stop and He doesn't want them to be able to do it. In the last part of the Amidah, when we say after the blessing of Shalom, it says here, Go back even. Chase after your mitzvot. Anybody who gets up against me for negativity, 
מהירה אפר עצתם וקלקל מחשבותם. Please ruin their plans and, and, and blemish all of their thoughts and ruin their thoughts, right? So that they won't be able to do this. Still here in a little bit we're talking about ourselves, right? Anybody is going to come up against me, but it's the same idea. Because David HaMelech represents the Shechina and, Ash- and David HaMelech doesn't want there for it to be a lack in the world and he doesn't want there to be a Ster Panim. So he would pray, HaKadosh Baruch Hu, stop these wicked people from covering up your name in the world. Right? Again, like we said earlier in, in, in Derech Hashem, everything good in the world is Hashem shining His face on the world, showing His continents. And everything bad in the world that we consider bad in the world is a lack of God, God clarity. It's so to say Hashem covered His face from being revealed in the world, right? Mm-hmm. So it's not that there is such thing as actually evil, there's just a thing of lack of godliness, right? Hashem does all of this with His great wisdom. Everything according to what's the fitting, the most best situation for the whole entire creation. Meaning to prevent the Rasha from doing his, his job that's not just for the people that might have been affected by it. The whole entire world would have been affected by it. Everything that Hashem does is for the whole entire cloud, for the whole entire creation. Hashem judges the creations in all of the different situations that they might find themselves in. According to what they truly are. Perush, what does that mean? A person who has everything going for him and he messes up his job. He, he was, uh, what's the word again in uh, uh, negligence, right? He was negligent. He had everything he needed and he was negligent. He didn't do his job properly. They gave him all the tools and he messed up on the job, right? He's not the same to the Mishu be Matzava Dochak Nitrat Belachatso, Velo Yeshlimit Huko. A person who doesn't have money, doesn't have health, he's having a hard time, and he's not able to do all of the mitzvot that he needs to do. He's not able, his mind is not free to be the, the complete Jew that he should be. He's under stress all the time. He's worrying about where he's going to get money from. He's worried about how he's going to feed his family. He's not the same as a person who has everything going for him and, he's, and he doesn't do his job. The way that Hashem judges them is not going to be equal. The outcome of their judgment is not going to be equal. Everyone's going to get judged according to what he really is. Is he did it by accident? Did he do it by accident? Did he do it intentionally? Did he do it to annoy Hashem? Was he held against his will or did he do it out of his own will? Hashem, may his name be blessed. He knows the true situation of everything that's going on in the world. The actions and the thoughts. And Hashem judges you according to the ultimate truth. Remember, we have Din and Cheshbon. Din means letter of the law. You break Shabbat, Karet. Right? Mot Yumat. That's what's written. That's the deen. Ah, but you only learned what Shabbat was a year ago. And you don't know that that thing was actually breaking Shabbat. You don't really understand the halacha. And the other guy that's a rabbi that turned on the light on Shabbat, even by accident, but he should have been more careful. He knows where the switch is in his house. For 20 years he lived in the same house. The switch has been there the whole time. Why was he leaning on the wall there? Accident, accident. But Hashem knows the exact situation. Right? We don't understand how to judge this. There's many different ways. People talk about this a lot. That you have three different people that lean on the wall. One, he knew it was Shabbat and he leaned on the wall and the light went on. One, he didn't know it was Shabbat and he put the light on intentionally and he thought it was Wednesday, but it really was Shabbat. Right? There's all these different ways. But in the end of the day, all that was done was a light switch was turned on. Three different people, three different outcomes. Same exact action was done. Hashem knows this. We don't. Continue on. Vula mina odan from this, we can understand another branch of what's called the world of Isurim, of hardships that a person goes through. There could be a person who's a tzaddik, and he has in his hand, he has sins. He's righteous. Again, according to the Torah, righteous is not like we talk about in Kabbalah and Chassidut. Righteous, according to the Torah, is a person who's 50 
percent, 51 percent uh, mitzvot, right? The majority of his life, he did good. He could have 49 percent of erot, but he's 51 percent righteous. That means he's righteous. He's a tzaddik, according to the Torah, right? We hear in our terms a lot of the times, tzaddik, tzaddik, tzaddik. We think this super holy person. A tzaddik, according to the simple understanding of the Torah, is a person who's 51 percent a tzaddik, 51 percent righteous or more, right? It could be even 50.1 percent. 50.1 percent is already the majority, right? <laughs> and or you have the Benoni, right? He mentions here, or the Benoni that he's completely balanced in his actions, meaning he's 50-50. And there's a gzera on that person. Yala, wake up. We want you to do tshuva. In Shamaim, we're calling you to do tshuva. From Shamaim, once they want you to do tshuva, they start to give you hardships. So you pay attention and you start to check your, your actions. How have, how have I been acting? What have I been doing with my life? This is, these are not the kind of hardships that can remove, that can atone for sin like we've mentioned before. We have certain hardships. A person who gets sick with a very hard disease. Why is he getting sick with that hard disease? So that in the Ulam Abba, he will be cleaner and he will be able to cling to Hashem. They take away from you all of the negativity in this world. You did bad things in this life and a previous life. So in this life, God forbid, a person gets a sickness that, that he suffers a lot for many years. Why did he get that sickness? To help to clean him up so that in the world to come, he can cling to Hashem completely. But these kind of hardships that we're talking about, they're hardships to wake you up. They're not cleaning up your sins. They're trying to make you, hey, hello, you're a Jew. You have mitzvot to do. What have you been doing with your life? They didn't change your situation of how many sins you have and how many mitzvot you have. It's just like a slap across the face. Hello, wake up. You got a mission to do here. Check yourself. You've been slipping. You haven't been acting right. You've been wasting your time. They want to wake up your heart and illuminate and to get it aroused to do tshuva. The only reason that there's a creation of consequences, of, of punishments, is because of lack of tshuva. What does Hashem really want in this world? That a person shouldn't do sins. And if he does do sins, make tshuva, come back. If he doesn't do tshuva in order for him to not be lost completely, then Hashem made it that we need punishments. We need negative actions. We, Hashem doesn't want us to be lost completely. First things first, you have a hardship that is just a slap in the face, it's just a warning sign, right? If a person doesn't get woken up by that, then you're going to get Yisurim that clean you up. Yisurim that they're coming to do a kapara, they're coming to bring atonement for you, to help you to clean up your negativity, but they're much harder. They're much harder. Eliyahu says about this, they're, they're, their ears got happy when they heard Musar, when they heard a little bit of a rebuke, and they will say, let's, let's return from our iniquities, let's, turn back. Let's, let's stop doing sins. Their ear would start to hear a little bit of uh, Musar, a little bit of Right, rebuke the tzaddikim, the rabbanim, the the prophets would tell them bad things, and all of a sudden they would be like, "Yalla, let's let's stop acting up. Let's let's be tzaddikim. Let's let's act properly." One last little uh, paragraph. There's a there's a border that was placed for the people that are doing negative in the world. How much will they let you from Shemaim, a person, to be wicked and to continue in his wickedness? When he gets to that border, they're not waiting for him at all. He will be completely destroyed and removed from the face of the earth. 
There's a certain limit that if you get to that limit, goodbye. Spiritually and physically, you will be removed from the world. Meaning a person could die in this world, and their soul has no continuation in the world to come. This is what the the, the Chachamim called Milui Hasea, filling up the measure. Remember, think we all have a silo. We all come into the world with a certain silo that we have to fill, right? We, all three of us, for sure, have listened to a certain rabbi that talks about this all the time, right? You come to a, a, a certain life and you have, in your silo, you're allowed to do 30% sins. If you do 28 and then you give a big part of tzedakah, you could get cleaned up and now all of a sudden you could do 40% of sins. The second though you reach the top of that silo, the limit of what you were allowed to do in this world, game over. You have up until that point. If you reach that point and you're not interested in doing tshuva, everything is done for you. I don't know what that means, but it's from Iov. If anyone wants to check or comment down below with what it means, it's in Job, Iov 20, 22. Chapter 20 and verse 22. Up until that time, that limit, you could be successful and you could be going on with your wickedness and doing all the evil things that you want. From the reason that we said before, because they want you, they opened up the gates for you to be lost. They want you to, yalla, go. You don't want to be a tzaddi? Get out of the world. You're the one that's doing it. They're not going to push you to do it. They just open the doors for you, right? You want to go to the bar? It's open. You want to go to the club? It's open. You want to go to that party? Go. Doors open. Please, bechavod. Right? They're not telling you to do it. They just say, all the gates are open. You want to lose, your li- you want to lose yourself? Go ahead. This is what the rabbi said. Right? Right? The, the opposite also we have to learn. Whoever comes, you want to purify yourself, they help you. You want to come make tuma in the world, you want to make a lack of potential in the world, a lack of godliness in the world, you want to do negativity in the world, what do they say? They open him up for him. What's, how is it explained? A person that wants to come do pure things, good things, we have a bike rider here, so this will be a nice <laughs> mashah for you. So then the person needs to go uphill on the bike. He needs help. There's gears, right? Here's a gear, maybe a person pushing you from the back, right? A little bit of a boost, something nice to help you get up. Why? Because you're trying to do good things. You're trying to get to the top of the hill. But the rasha that wants to go downhill, so then you don't need gears, you don't need a push. All you need is for it to be open. And if it's open and you want to go downhill, you're going to go downhill, right? Nothing can stop you. At a certain point, the brakes are not going to help you, right? You want to go downhill? They say, go, the gate's open. You can go downhill. (laughs) But when you reach that limit, when you reach the limit that they budgeted for you to do negativity in this world, you will now reach a point of no return and you will be lost. Very scary words. Then the anger of Hashem will flare. And there will be a holocaust on that person. And you will be completely annihilated in that holocaust. Scary things, right? And I usually don't want to end on a negative thing, but this is where we have to stop right now. (laughs) But we have to know that, to bring it back to good, we need to learn this, that why is all of this the case? Hashem wants us to cling to Him. Hashem wants us to earn it. And if we're not going to play the game, let's not waste godly energy. Again, your neshama is the spark of Hashem from up above. Even the rasha, even the wicked person, what gives him the ability to do negativity in this world? The godly spark that he has inside of him from Hashem. If that godly spark is going to become a chilul Hashem, is going to become a negativity in this world, the Jew that's walking around and people look at him and call him the Hollywood Jew, the pedophile Jew, the Jeffrey Epstein Jew, right? if that's the case, Hashem would rather you get out of the world as soon as possible. Get out of there, physically and spiritually. Let this energy stop. Let it come back to its source. Get reconnected to what it's meant to be doing. And God willing, come back here in another Gilgul. Get another chance. But at least this time we have to stop it. You can't continue going downhill. 
You can't continue doing these negative, negative things and ending up ruining the plan. Hashem can't tolerate that. So what does Hashem do? He says, ah, you want to be a wicked person? All the gates are open for you. Why does Hashem open all the gates for the wicked person? So that they will be successful in spiritually committing suicide and taking themselves out of this world. Stop ruining the world. Stop, stop making kilkul and, 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 a, and a, a desecration of this world and a desecration of Hashem's name. Do good. We're here to do good. And the more we do good, like we learned today, the more in heaven they're going to say, Yala, let's help him get through the next test. Let's, let's, let's give him a little bit of boost. He's trying to do good in this world. We have an obstacle coming up. There's a cop waiting with the speed radar in a few meters. Let's tell him that his ways is going to tell him there's a cop there. He needs to slow down, right? Let's help him a little bit. And, and the opposite is true too. If we're, not, if we're not doing that, sometimes they're going to say, hey, the cop's there and we're not going to tell you. You're going to get the ticket today. You might even get arrested so that you don't drive like that anymore, right? We want to be always in the camp that they're helping us from Shemaim. Abale Ta'er, we want to be the people from the camp that are coming to make purifications of the world, coming to bring more Tahor, more purity, more goodness in the world. And when we do that, Misayim Biyado, they help us, they help you to do the right thing, they help you, they give you the Koch from Shemaim, the Siyata Dishmaya, to sanctify Hashem's name in this world and to do the right things. And may the Shiro be an Atzlacha and the Refua from my father who's going through a surgery right now. Yosef Kamilo Ben Eliyahu, Eliyahu, Vimiriam, and uh, all the other sick people in Amisa that need healing, and all of the soldiers that need Atzlafa, <laughs> and may we get lost and rid of this horrible government and all the negative things that they're doing to prevent the complete Geula and get replaced with Hashem with true leaders, true Manhigim, true leaders that want good for Amisa and are worried about Amisa and not about America. Amen. Can you add some?